Hey everybody, it's Meredith Miller with Inner Integration, bringing you your sauna Q&A Mondays. I'm here answering a bunch of questions today. My list is getting longer and longer. If you want to leave a question for me to answer, check out the link in the description below the video. You'll be taken to my website. You will need to log into my website in order to leave your question there. Um, and if you need a much quicker response, please look at the personal email support option on my website, innerintegration.com. I will answer your email within 48 hours with a very comprehensive answer to your question. So that's if you need more immediate and personal assistance, if you uh, you know don't wanna share your personal information out there as well. I do read all questions anonymously. I will never use your name. So this question comes from a person who says, hi Meredith, thank you for your warmth and kindness. I was both physically abused by my father and mentally abused by my narcissistic mom. The mental abuse has caused me so much more pain and anguish than any beating ever has. I have been no contact with my mother for six months and am feeling better about my life. I still have very low self-esteem and always compare myself to others. I can see great things in others but not in myself. I get nervous and worried whenever I speak to people and I always feel like an outsider. What can I do to overcome this? I want to have more love and confidence in myself. Thank you. You know, what you said, and I'm sorry that you went through all that in childhood, and what you said, I have heard before people tell me, like they went through physical abuse, they went through sexual abuse, they went through psychological abuse. I even had one person who's a war veteran tell me that even with the war trauma that she experienced was nothing compared to the trauma that she had with her own mother the psychological trauma, right? Psychological trauma, psychological abuse is serious. It doesn't leave scars. You can't see it, it's totally invisible. That's why it's so hard to identify. That's why most people don't even realize they're being abused, right? And so many people tell me that it is so much more damaging to them, so much more hard to heal from than the physical, the sexual, the financial, the spiritual abuse that they endured. And you know, you, you are not alone in that. And I'm so sorry that you went through that. Um, regarding dealing with your mother, great job going no contact six months ago. That's awesome. I'm glad you're feeling better about your life. That's like one of the first things that happens, right? After you go no contact with a toxic person is like you start to feel so much better. You have more energy, you have more clarity, you have more self-esteem, you have more self-respect, right? Because you set a boundary saying, look, you are unable to respect me the way I respect myself, so we can't have contact, right? And so then you feel better about yourself because you put the line down, you put your personal limit down, and you said, no more, no more abuse, I'm not gonna tolerate it, I'm gonna take care of myself first. So good job, really good job on that. That is really hard when you're dealing with these family dynamics and parents and just the guilt of going no contact, you know, so difficult, you did, a really awesome thing to support yourself and that was no easy thing you know uh, you said that you still get nervous and worried whenever you're talking to fe talking to people you feel like an outsider how to overcome this so what it sounds like to me it sounds like you're talking about the loneliness in our child wound you know where you feel like nobody understands you and you're different and nobody really hears you and you just feel really alone in the world like maybe even when you're hanging out with people right? Like you, you don't fit in in some way, maybe like all your life, this was like a pattern, right? So what I have found as the cure for that, or rather the antidote for that are two things. One is presence and the other is authenticity, right? Presence is you being a hundred percent present with yourself as often as possible, right? all the time if possible, but it's not gonna be all the time because if you've been through these situations and just humans in general, because of the overstimulation in our world, people are not present, you know, like you hang out with people, maybe in a group or maybe with one-on-one -on -one friend and like, just look around the room, like how many people are absorbed in their cell phones, you know, and, and in some digital thing versus being present with the other person or how many times are you having a conversation with someone you're like, it's like they're not even there. Like it seems like they're there, but they're not. They're clearly thinking about something else or they're thinking about what they're gonna say next, not listening to you and that sort of thing. Or they, you know, they, just, they have their agenda and they're not really being present with you, right? 
So be present with yourself like as much as possible. Like it's called mindfulness, right? And this is your mindfulness training is be in the moment aware of what you're doing. You know, I'm moving the book on the table. I'm cutting carrots in the kitchen. I'm scrubbing the floors, you know, instead of being all over the place and distracted in your mind, right? It's really important to get control over your mind. After having been through mind control, which is psychological abuse, your mind is all over the place. You got to retrain it. Okay, and one of the first things you can start doing is practicing mindfulness, like bringing yourself back to the moment. Every time you catch yourself distracted out there, take a deep breath and bring yourself back to the moment. And maybe you have to do this like a hundred times a day at first. Maybe you have to do it a thousand times a day at first. But it gets easier and easier. And then it becomes like, you know, the training wheels go off after a period of time and it's like it becomes your automatic. Like as soon as you catch, you're like, oh right, I'm gone again, back, present, right? And then the more present you are, and the more present you are, and the more present you are. When you are 100% present with yourself, you don't feel so lonely anymore. You might be alone, you might be physically in solitude, there might be nobody around you, but you feel not desperate about that. You don't feel upset about that. In fact, you feel really at peace because you are so present with yourself. And then you can take this into your interpersonal relationships at work, with your friendships, new people that you're dating and be 100% present with them in the moment. You're having a conversation, your cell phone's put away, your shopping list is put away, your thoughts about the day and the conversation, all that's put away and you are just 100% present listening to this person. That is such a gift. How often do you hang out with someone who is 100% present with you, right? Very rarely. So be that example, be 100% present with this person, even if they're not 100% present with you, right? Maybe you're at work and you're having the situation and what's gonna happen is people are gonna feel that. People are gonna start to feel good around you. People are gonna wanna be around you and not for any other reason, just that like they feel seen, they feel heard, they feel like you're there when you're having a conversation with them. That is such a gift to offer people. Now again, I always have to say this to my audience because my audience, we are recovering codependence, right? You have to have boundaries to that. You gotta have limits. You know, Don't allow someone to take advantage of you. If they're taking advantage of you and manipulating you, cut that off immediately. You don't owe them that. But I'm talking about with people you know, who are not like that, people who have a conscience, people who are not manipulative. Be fully present with them and see how that revolutionizes your interpersonal connections. Like even if you are going to like a networking meeting where you're gonna have 30 second to two minute conversations with people, be so fully present in that 30 seconds or those two minutes with that person that they walk away from there and they're like, man, I don't know what it was about so-and-so, but I really like her. I really like him. Like there's just something about them. That's what it is. It makes people feel good. Right? How many other people feel unseen, unheard, unnoticed, don't fit in, don't belong, right? You're not alone there. So that's one way that you can turn that into a gift for yourself and for other people. The other way is through authenticity and that is being 100% you, your true self, the self-expression of that, who you are, right? How many times did you compromise who you are or dim your light or not allow yourself to shine in the radiance of who you truly are, not allow yourself to express your joy because that person you're with was like gonna shut it down, gonna sabotage it, gonna make you feel like crap if you felt good about anything and you weren't all absorbed in whatever drama or whatever they wanted you to be absorbed in, right? So 100% authenticity with yourself. I guarantee you will feel so much better if you put that into practice because it's like it's like a form of counteracting you abandoning yourself, right? Because when, when we got into those relationships and when we enabled that abuse and that manipulation, essentially we abandoned ourselves. Yeah, we could say that person deceived us, that person abandoned us, but in reality, we abandoned ourselves. We deceived ourselves because we weren't 100% aligned with ourselves, with our authenticity. Because if we were, we would have said no thank you to that person, right? So that's the work that you wanna do in order to create the antidote to that sense of pathological loneliness that is caused in childhood 
from being raised by a narcissistically abusive parent. It sounds like in your case, you had both. You had a dad and a mom, just that your dad was more physically abusive, your mom was more psychologically abusive. I would rec recommend to you these two books. One, Will I Ever Be Good Enough? Healing the Daughters of Narcissistic Mothers by Carol McBride. Fantastic book. This is a must read for everyone. I mean, even if you're a guy and you're raised by a narcissistic mom, I would get this book because the concepts are so relatable. The other one I would get is Mothers Who Can't Love, A Healing Guide for Daughters by Susan Ford. Another fantastic book for anyone who was raised by a narcissistic mother. I mean, psychologists pretty much agree that the ones who get it, right? They understand the narcissistic abusive, you know, dynamic. What they say is that like, it's so much more damaging when it's the mother than the father. Like it's really damaging when it's the dad, but it's so much more damaging when it's the mom because like that is, that should be your source of nurturing and love in life. Like the nurturing mother figure. You know, the father being the support, the protector, and loving, right? But in a different way. And not getting that foundation from the mother is devastating to a child and devastating to that adult who grows up as an adult child, never having healed those wounds. So now is your time, baby. It's your time, right? It's time to heal that, to be there for yourself, to reparent yourself in the way that your parents never could. A big part of that that I learned, you know, is coming to the acceptance of who they are, accepting the truth of who they are. And I don't mean accepting the abuse and going back for more. What I mean is accepting the truth, putting the label on manipulator, narcissist, sociopath, whatever label that is, you know, that you feel you need to put on there with your parents, with your mom, to really understand who that person is because that acceptance is what breaks the trauma bond. That acceptance, that truth is what sets you free from the Stockholm Syndrome and from keep getting into the trauma bond in Stockholm Syndrome with a new person because the original trauma bond with the parent or parents was never broken, right? So the only way to break that bond is truth and acceptance, right? So the more you educate yourself the more you see the patterns, the more you're gonna be able to validate yourself because you're gonna realize like it's not just you, like it happened to so many people and like this is what professionals say, like this is what like two PhDs, you know, say on the matter. They know, they get it. Read the books, understand what it is, keep working on the truth and acceptance so that you can get out of that and set yourself free. Um, you know, and, and you're gonna to have to grieve that too. Like you're never gonna have a mother like most normal people have. Your mother's never gonna be that person and she's never gonna heal herself, she's never gonna change. You're never gonna know what it's like to have that. And while you might have the fortune, the blessing of meeting an older woman or maybe several in your life who kind of play this surrogate mom role, you know, where they're healthy women and they give you this sense of love and nurturing and, you know, mother-daughter dynamic in sort of like a friendship way, you know, that can be amazing um, to have someone like that in your life. And if you don't have that person, then I would take the shamanic route of looking at Mother Earth Pachamama, as they say in Peru in the Andes Mountains, you know, Mother Earth, that is, that is your ultimate mother. You know, you came from this planet. She was your mother. You came through your, your human mother, but even your human mother came from the great mother. And that's this planet, the Mother Earth. And I would get barefoot and go outside and walk on the earth. And I would put your belly button, I would lay down on the ground and put your belly button to the ground. This is something my teacher in Peru taught us. The, the belly button, the Cusco, they call it, which sounds like Cusco, which is the city in Peru, which meant, you know, the center of their empire, the center of the world. Cusco, your navel, your belly button is like the center of you. It's like, think about the umbilical cord, right? And so they put their belly button to the ground and they imagine like giving the mother earth everything heavy, everything painful, everything negative, all of that grief and they give it to Mother Earth and you don't need to feel bad because Pachamama is gonna compost that, 
right? She's gonna compost that and she's gonna create new fresh soil that's gonna give life to something else. So release all of that and connect, you know, touch the dirt, sit in the trees, look at the trees. Maybe there's horrible weather outside. It's like pouring down rain, it's cold. Go sit by the window even, you know, and just contemplate, like looking out at the trees, watch the trees blow in the wind. You know, watch the birds fly by, watch the different clouds move by and the weather happening and just get into this space of like awe and gratitude for the feminine principle, the feminine energy. Because, you know, if you have this discord with the feminine energy because of your mom, it's like part of you almost is gonna hate yourself as a woman because of that. Or if you're a man, you're gonna hate your feminine qualities. Like we all have masculine and feminine energy, right? And so the feminine qualities of loving and being open and receptive and this sort of thing and nurturing, right? So in order to truly love that part of yourself, you're going to need to create a healthy connection with the feminine principle, you know? And if, if it's not your mom, because in this case you're raised by a narcissist mom, and, and that will never be healed with her. Right? And maybe you have the blessing of having an amazing or more than one amazing older woman in your life or kind of like a mother figure to you or maybe an auntie or something, you know, or maybe you don't have any of that. So you turn to Mother Earth and you connect to Mother Earth and you feel that and you feel connected and you feel loved and supported and nurtured. And every time you eat food and drink water, you are just so grateful to this Mother Earth for providing that nourishment for you. That will change things. Like it will literally shift things. I know it sounds like all woo woo, right? But it's real. It's real. Like we came from this earth. Like where do you think your body came from? Like you were once a single celled organism, right? So like first you, you grew a body based on the things that your mother ate. Everything your mother ingested became you. Then you were born and you know, then you became dependent on the food outside in the world. And like your tissues, your body, your entire body, how did it go from here to like here, right? Food that you ate the food you ate that came from this mother earth, this earth is you, it is your great mother. You are what you eat, you are mother earth. So connect to the great mother so that you can heal that bond that was so damaged growing up, you know, in childhood. And, you know, also release yourself from your mother's legacy, from the legacy of abuse, right? Release yourself from that by taking 100% responsibility for your life now. Recognize you can't change the past. You can't change what happened. That was what it was. The only thing you can shift right now is your perspective, your perspective of what happened and the action that you take to take the reins of control of your destiny back in your hand. That is 100% responsibility for yourself now in moving forward. And that's all you can do. Right, but it's not, and it's, it's not like a small thing. Like this is like this is a lot of major things that you can be doing to heal yourself from those patterns. I truly believe that it's something that will always be with you in some way, you know. But as long as we can shift our perspective of that and recognize that we are who we are because of that, and not despite of that, that there was some gift some treasure in that, that we can transmute into something positive now and moving forward, whether it's a sense of meaning or a sense of life purpose or a new sense of direction or understanding in life, just some awakening to this whole other part of who you are or this whole other reality that's out there that you just didn't even know because you were living in this negativity, limited paradigm of the narcissistic abuse right? So that's what you can do for yourself now. I am sending you a big hug and I will see you soon.